this is a, a spare I forget whether this is for the Land Rover or, or what um, and you can see the two stub axles in place doing their job and they just have the uh, bearings pushed on each end with a small dab of uh, epoxy to retain them uh, and then a kingpin which can be a simple wire kingpin uh, rubbish, talking rubbish um, uh, track rod running between the two ends and if you put a kink in it uh, you can then adjust it for length to make sure it's tracking straight now with this uh, again we have a top and bottom plate to the axle but it's now very very simple the top and bottom plate are identical so you can make them as a, a matched pair uh, just drilled at each end for the kingpin uh, but then you require a spacer in the centre uh, the same thickness of, you know, yeah the same thickness uh, as the stub axles and uh, so that's what we've got so the axle itself is made of three pieces a short spacer and then your top and bottom plates uh, and they're drilled at each end a nice nice radius because we're keeping our clearances tight with this uh, I drilled holes a pair of holes through all three plates and just inserted a bit of wire and soldered it to, to make it up into a, uh, a really solid permanent unit. Now I also of course uh, want to pivot my axles that's very important as far as the movements concerned and this was very easy and I pivoted it by simply uh, soldering on uh, a piece of fairly small bore tube it's probably about 1.2 mil internal diameter tube something like that making sure that I get it square and in the center um, and uh, that completes the basic axle now if pardon if you want to make an axle in metal that is I suspect absolutely the simplest way of doing it um, it's very bomb proof very uh, very simple very simple um, and uh, within uh, many people's capabilities the kingpins I tend to use one mil diameter nickel silver wire it's as simple as that so the holes for the kingpins are one mil and the holes for the track rod are 0.8 mil so I use a slightly finer wire for the track rod but uh, it doesn't really matter um, so that was the big break for me if, uh, if you take my meaning I then went uh, a bit further and uh, thought that's all very well but actually it still takes time to make um, just milling those parts on the step craft uh, it takes time to set up and the actual milling process for that little lot is probably 20 minutes or so you know it's, it's it's not a not a very quick machine it does a very nice job but it's not a very quick machine um, so it's fine for me when I want an axle but if somebody else wants an axle uh, it's kind of as much use as a chocolate teapot because it costs more uh, in computer time machine time my time than anybody would be happy paying for so I thought well take take this principle and have a look at uh, laser cutting now I do most of my laser cutting in a material called Trotec which is acrylic and I then whoops I keep banging the camera never mind 
Um, and I then reworked this principle to suit uh, an acrylic uh, manu manufacturer, for want of a better word. And this is the equivalent. Now this is actually a 4mm scale axle. I think it is anyway. It could possibly be an Austin 7, I can't remember. It's just one I obviously made and uh, as, a, as a test. Um, and this is kind of exactly the same as this, insofar as it has a top and bottom uh, plate and uh, a centre spacer plate. Um, but it has these side plates here and these side plates do two things uh, first of all they provide uh, a fixed well they provide a pivot in a known place uh, but also because the way these uh, are all profiled it kind of clamps uh, all these all the elements together and locates uh, the various components. So uh, if you've got three hands, uh, four hands and God knows how many fingers, you can hold the three axle, uh, the three horizontals together and offer up a back plate and it'll sort of click in and hold uh, these in the right relationship to each other and then you offer up uh, the front plate, click it in, and then you've got this assembly which you hold very, very tightly until you get it swimming with solvent and it glues itself together into this extremely neat uh, axle, which is great. Now, uh, uh, yes, this this is definitely uh, a formal, formal axle. Um, and then uh, one uh, introduces a stub axle. Now, I, uh, here is a card of, and the uh, the other back plates dropped out. I shall have to find that. Um, oh, here it is. That's the back plate. But here's. A laser card for what does it say? A 33 mil axle. Now the 33 mil is between between the kingpins. That's what the 33 mil refers to. And uh, instead of the nice brass stub axle, we've got exactly the same reproduced in Trotec. Now in order to get the, uh, the thickness and maximise what we've got, if you like, uh, I've doubled them up. So you use two bonded together on each side. So you break them out of the card and poke them both onto a same bit of wire and line them up and then get them swimming in glue. So they uh, swimming in solvent, so they become one. So we've got uh, effectively two uh, stub axles there which are sized for two mil bearings. I've also got this type of stub axle uh, just double sided and that allows you for the option of uh, a front servo so a rear track rod and front servo. Now these components, you can see, that's the top and bottom of the axle. These arrow-shaped ones are your middle spacers that gap the uh, top and bottom out. And then these plates um, uh, have... Um, recesses at both ends and those recesses uh, match the 
the back of the arrowheads and so it, it holds them all in position and lines them up very neatly. Um, and then, very simply, as I showed in a previous video, you get some 1mm wire and bend a 90 degree, uh, uh, bend in the end, as it were, and that becomes your kingpin. Uh, and the joy of that is using it like that, it reinforces the plastic axle. Uh, and the tails of the wire sit neatly on top of the axle and you use epoxy uh, resin, you know, epoxy glue to hold that down and it strengthens the whole thing and it is quite strong enough. Uh, now, uh, I can provide these cards and bearings for for sale at assorted sizes. Um, I can't as yet provide these brass uh, stub axles for sale uh, if there were sufficient demand I would get uh, some of these either laser cut in steel uh, or water jet cut, even more expensive, um, in, in steel uh, if there was uh, sufficient demand. But obviously that sort of thing requires something of an investment, uh, let's say, and it's not something I will uh, do, um, do for myself. Um, now the other terribly important thing I keep banging on about with these things is uh, it's ever so important that the bearings are recessed into the wheel as far as you safely can without breaking through the other side. Um, the aim is to get the kingpin ideally lining up with the back of the tyre. That's where you really want it. That's rarely quite possible, but we uh, we come close. Now, in fact, this Bedford, you can see the kingpin does line up with the back of the tyre. And that means that uh, as it steers, the wheel kind of steers on the spot. It doesn't... Uh, let me zoom out, beg your pardon. As it steers, it steers uh, on the spot. It doesn't travel forward and travel back uh, as, it, as it steers. Um, and that means it looks really good as it steers. Uh, but you have, to, uh, you have to work quite hard to recess them like that. I tend to fill the back of my wheels with uh, epoxy putty milliput and when it's dry I bore them out on a lathe. I have been known to hand bore them. Um, so, but that's what we aim to do. We, we try and uh, get the kingpins as far out as possible. There's one other thing I've not covered and that is uh, this type of stub axle. Now this is the Austin 7. Um, this vehicle doesn't have wheels that uh, would accept this type of bearing as you can see. Um, it would make a nonsense of them. This kind of wheel requires very simply a wire stub axle, a one mil wire stub axle uh, and then on the very end, on the very end in here, there is uh, in fact a plastic washer retaining the wheel uh, onto this wire. Now it's a little bit better than that because I matched the wire of the stub axle to some tube and I drilled out the wheel 
and uh, put some brass tube permanently into the wheel to act as a, uh, a plain bearing um, rather than just relying on the plastic which, which was, would be less of a good idea. Uh, so I'd strongly suggest people do that. However, how do you make this little stub axle? Um, see if I can find a right. Okay, let's have a look at that. That is this axle uh, top view. Uh, it's a very short, very small axle, as you can see. Track rod, etc., etc. This stub axle, and you can see this wire axle stuck out. That's one mil diameter. What I what I didn't do is just solder a piece of wire to the end of that profile because it wouldn't be a good job. It wouldn't make a good job at all. Uh, and particularly if you're soft soldering, uh, it would fall off in no time flat. Um, what I did was I got some one mil nickel silver and I bent it into that angle and then I filed away uh, one millimeter of this profile and then soldered this bent wire onto uh, the stub axle profile so actually as far as soldering goes there is contact all along there and not just at the end and of course at that point if the angle is not quite right you can you can safely tweak it and adjust it because it isn't going to go anywhere so the secret with this is that is the piece of wire along there it is not simply a short stub which wouldn't uh, wouldn't last five minutes um, so uh, I machined out these profiles and then just bent some wire and soldered them on. I needed to recess them because uh, it's still got to um, be as slim as possible and, and uh, clear the wheel uh, which of course runs very close to the back of it so you don't you can't afford to waste space with any of these things. Um, you then have to, of course, pivot these things. There's countless numbers of ways of pivoting these axles. Um, many vehicles, you're lucky, and there's some structure there that you can just sling a drill right through in the right place and then put your wire through and your axle swings about on that. Others, you sometimes have to uh, glue or solder in um, some metal bent at a right angle uh, to be drilled and all the rest. Uh, it varies on, on what it is you're making or converting. Uh, but that, that's, the, that's the simple end of it. So axles can be very very simple. The simplest form of axle is plate top and bottom with a spacer and profiled stub axles left hand and right well they don't even have to be left hand and right hand because of course you just flip them over they're the same they're identical and then if you're if you've got very fine wheels that you can't fit a bearing then you need wire this is how you do the wire i hope that makes sense and i hope that answers people's questions as to uh, what and why good luck